Alright guys, welcome back to Forza Motorsport 6. This is Car Wars Episode 6. And in today's episode we're going to see two LMP1 cars go head to head at the Nürburgring. First up, it's a Toyota TS040 Hybrid. This is my first time ever driving this car. It's, it sounds pretty cool, but uh, there's a bit of wheel spin. The LMP1 car that I'm most comfortable driving would be the um, Audi R18 which we'll see later in this episode. So far, the car actually feels very much like the Audi R18, in the way that it handles. Of course, this one also has an all-wheel drive system, but instead of a diesel engine, this is a petrol engine with a hybrid electronic system. It's fast, I have to admit, it's actually quite fast. Uh, in the 24-hour Le Mans race, this car didn't perform as well as everyone maybe had it expected or anticipated. Of course, uh, for numerous years now, the Audi team has uh, won consecutive races at Le Mans 24 hours. And I believe the Toyota team actually have a newer version of this car back to go head-to-head -head against Porsche and uh, Audi's new car at the Le Mans 2016 race uh, with Porsche winning it back in 2015. Coming in through these corners this car actually feels quite planted. Although it is my first time ever driving it, it, it doesn't feel as though it has a huge learning curve apart from the fact that it does spin the wheels every so often uh, if you are in a low gear at a low speed. But again, with the all-wheel drive system, it usually isn't much of a problem. One thing I would like to talk about during this episode of Car Wars is the new series of Top Gear, presented by Chris Evans and Matt LeBlanc. Uh, the first episode aired on Sunday, and I have to admit, it wasn't actually too bad. The cars shown in the show were quite good. I liked the Dodge Viper and the Aerial Nomad. However, Chris Evans's and uh, Matt LeBlanc's uh, performances in the show were a bit under par. Of course, uh, Matt LeBlanc wasn't really himself. He wasn't really delivering the lines in his usual fashion. Even the uh, a uh, bit where Sabine Schmitz made the Air Force pilot throw up, it just seemed a bit fake. I would prefer that, you know, if they try to keep it a wee bit more realistic, I doubt an Air Force pilot threw up after half an hour in a Chevrolet Corvette. It, it just doesn't make much sense. But other than that, it was actually quite a good show. Uh, the first five minutes was a bit of a shock. Chris Evans immediately started screaming at us. Which was unfortunate because I actually thought I'd done something wrong whenever he started screaming and shouting at us. It just doesn't make any sense. He's trying to be a presenter that he's really not. Even even the uh, chemistry within the studio, it just wasn't there. There was no chemistry between Matt LeBlanc and Chris Evans, which is unfortunate because we have actually come to expect some sort of chemistry between the presenters off top here. Uh, for example, uh, Richard, uh, James, and Jeremy would usually be, you know having a wee bit of banter or they'd be or slagging each other off a bit. Fortunately it just didn't feel like the old Top Gear. But part of the parts I did like of the show was the uh, new uh, star in the Rallycross car. I have to admit it was quite original and quite interesting. Obviously it means that the stars in the car actually have to learn a bit more of track. They have to you know put a wee bit more skill into the uh, driving. Obviously that it didn't it is original, it's an original idea. It means that they would maybe get out of boring cars like a Vauxhall Astra or you know, something something just a little bit more exciting. I believe they were driving the Mini Cooper John Cooper Works or something. Or rally spec, high performance Mini Cooper for the road. And it was just it was exciting to see them going around and going through the water pit getting a bit of air on the track, it was nice to see. Uh, but unfortunately I just believe that the, uh, the, comment or the presentation just wasn't the best in the studio. But of course I'm probably going to continue watching it, just to see how they change the show up a bit, see how they adapt, 
see if they can make it a wee bit more engaging and a wee bit more uh, entertaining to watch. Like, I wouldn't exactly write it off as being flop gear, as a lot of people have said. But definitely Chris Evans, I just think, needs to maybe fuck off or just improve slightly. He's just not exactly the best presenter. Even that episode with him and James May, where uh, James May was at his house and had all the Ferraris, he it, it just looked like a bit of a dick. But, of course, you, you never know, he could actually become a good present uh, presenter. Uh, the show's still early, it's only the first episode of the series. Hopefully it does turn into something good. So that means we would have Jeremy Clarkson's show, uh, Top Gear and uh, whatever other car shows, like Fifth Gear or whatever. But we're across the line with a 619.855, that's, that's quite a good time for a car that I've never actually driven before. Uh, now it'll be the turn off the Audi R18 e-tron Quattro. I'll see you back in a bit. Alright guys, now it's the turn of the Audi R18 e-tron Quattro. Of course this car is different in that it is a diesel engine, but of course it also has a all-wheel all -wheel drive system and a 7-speed uh, automatic uh, transmission. First corner already actually feels uh, much better than the Toyota. The first corner in the Toyota was a bit dodgy. Now even down and through here, we're carrying about 125 miles per hour up oh, on the grass. One problem I do have with these LMP1 cars is the slightest touch of the analog stick just kind of, you know, you're basically a full lock. But whenever you're doing high speeds, it can mean a quicker change of direction, which is quite good. However, we're, we're going to continue talking about the top gear thing, uh, I have to admit. Uh, the shoe was quite good. I will watch it again for the simple fact of looking at the trailers and looking at uh, the sneak previews of what's coming up. Like there's Ford Mustangs, there's all these other cars. They have a really good lineup of cars. I'll, g I'll eventually get over Chris Evans. Maybe, maybe he'll improve. Maybe he'll, you know, just not be in it as much. And fortunately, we've still got good presenters like Chris Harris. Uh, your man Rory, I don't know his uh, surname, uh, Sabine Schmitz, and Matt LeBlanc. You know, so it's still a good show, it's still got a lot of potential. Uh, hopefully, Sabine Schmitz will show up on it a lot more, have them at. This is quite an interesting one they watch in terms of uh, just their amount of skill behind the wheel of a car. That there was actually a very uh, ent entertaining part of the show whenever she was uh, chasing the, Dodge, or the SRT Viper uh, with the Chevrolet uh, Corvette. Other things I would like to say is the uh, production value of the show, the amount of money that's went into editing the videos and the amount of cinematography that's went into each little bit of video for all, for all the cars shown. It's quite spectacular, it's still got that essence of Top Gear where the car is the star of the show and it's just good to see. But anyway, I'll, uh, I'll finish talking about that there for now. Uh, it was pretty good. If you haven't seen it, I would recommend that you watch it. Uh, it's definitely, I wouldn't say Top Gear's dead just yet. There's still a lot of life on it and hopefully there's more originality to be seen. But we'll get back to this here and so far this car feels really good throughout the track. You can hold a lot more speed through the corners it feels. Of course this is a car I'm somewhat more used to. But it sometimes does take me a bit of time getting used to the feeling of this car on this track. There's just a lot of turns to remember and sometimes if you run the curb or get a wheel on the grass it can kind of mess you up. Coming down and through here, we're doing about 170, near up 175. It's 180 now. And you just slow down. Maybe kick it down two gears for this corner here. Back down to about 130. One problem with this car is the fact that it's a diesel, so it only revs to about 5,000 RPM. But the power and the torque is instant. It's there whenever you need it, in the lower RPM range. 
So if you are driving without traction control off, or no, even with traction control off, there is no wheel spin with this car. This is the last section of the Nürburgring. I can't remember the actual name of this section of track, but it's just the last you know, 30 or so corners, or maybe 40, not too sure. Uh, one thing I do dislike about this track is the fact that the curbs are so high. So if you do hit them, it can uh, offset the balance of the car, maybe pushing you out wide. Oh shit, I forgot about the corner. Whoops, my bad. Just rewind that a bit. It's too busy uh, talking about curbs, how high they were, that I forgot that this corner was upcoming. One problem with the uh, LMP1 cockpit is the uh, window so small. So when you are going down a hill, you sometimes lose uh, some uh, vision of the road ahead. Fuck's sake. Oh my god, what the... I, I don't even know what the hell that was. I do not know what I was doing there, but thank god we didn't hit that wall. Will this be quicker than the Toyota? After that there, I really don't know. Usually better than this. This usually doesn't happen. Oh, up on the fucking curb again, sir, that's, that's a very easy car sell. It's a very small car sell, but unfortunately my little pea-sized brain couldn't comprehend the small, simple corner. Ended up running the curb and slowing the car down drastically. Of course, we're on now to the final straightaway. This car should hit about 195-ish miles per hour, so it is quite a fast car. Sometimes through this corner, you might just want to lift. In the last few corners now, Damn it, turned in too turned in way too soon, way too quick. A 119.493. seconds faster or yeah, point four seconds faster than the uh Toyota TS040. It's incredibly good. I have to say that both these cars are really nice to drive. The um Toyota it's got a petrol engine, so if you prefer petrol engines, it might be your type of car. There were a couple of mess-ups, or uh, a couple of issues with both cars on the track. So I dare say, if you ironed them out, both these cars would be very similar in terms of lap times. So I, I have to end this video in saying that it's up to you. There really is no better LMP1 car. Both of these cars are so evenly matched. The Audi. Uh, maybe better for beginner drivers who don't like wheel spin or drivers who are just beginning to drive without uh, assists on and the Toyota if you can master it I dare say it would be the better car but both these cars are so close it really doesn't matter but uh, thank you so much for watching uh, I'm going to end the video here I hope you have enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video goodbye